Hi guys, I'm Valerie Bertinelli, and you may know me from Valerie's Home Cooking or from Kids Baking Championship. Today, I'm gonna show you my go-to recipe for thin and crispy chocolate chip cookies. These are delightful, filled with toffees and chocolate and walnuts. It's gonna be one of those recipes that you put right in your back pocket. You're gonna bring it out whenever you need something fresh and warm from the oven that's just a bit sweet, a bit crunchy, and delicious. To start off with, you're gonna to wanna to have everything in its place, all the ingredients, you're not rushing around for anything. So first things first, you're gonna have your oven at 350 degrees, and you're gonna have the two racks in there on the top third and the bottom third. That way you're gonna be able to fit in two cookie sheets, and you want parchment on the cookie sheets. Get your butter out of the fridge and get it softened to room temperature. The other ingredients that you're gonna need are all-purpose flour, baking soda, three quarters of a cup of white granulated sugar, and three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Two eggs, room temperature, a little bit of water, some vanilla, and don't forget salt. You're always gonna need salt. And it would not be a chocolate chip cookie without chocolate chips, but I have some extra added fun in there too. We've got chocolate chips, semi-sweet, some toffee bits, and some walnuts. Why don't you go and get all of those ingredients together, and I'll wait, just press pause. You got everything ready, right? You got your parchment on your sheet pans, you got the oven heating up, and your butter is coming to room temperature. I have a dry bowl and I have a wet bowl. Actually, the bowls are both dry, but they're gonna have different ingredients in them. <laughs> this will hold the dry ingredients. So I'm gonna get flour in here and baking soda. So I'm gonna get two cups of all-purpose flour. There are a lot of people that feel very strongly about measuring when it comes to baking, and I happen to agree with them, but I want these cookies to be the easiest cookie in the world for you to do. So you don't have to get out your scale. Don't pound the flour down. Keep it nice and light. Now we're gonna need the leavener, and that's the baking soda. Three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. Now time for some salt, a teaspoon and a quarter. Even when you're making baked goods, anything sweet, always wanna add a little bit of salt and that brings out all the flavor. I don't want all those ingredients just sitting on top. I want them all mixed together. So get a whisk out and get all the dry ingredients whisked together. You really want that baking soda to get mixed in to the flour with the salt. And you don't want to overmix it once all the wet ingredients are in there. So this is gonna give you a bit of a guarantee that there's not gonna be a chunk of baking soda here and a chunk of baking soda there. Just get it all in the flour. Okay, dry ingredients are ready to go. Now it's time to get to the wet ingredients. Two sticks of softened butter. This right into the bowl. Now I know sugar may not look like a wet ingredient, but it does liquefy when it's baked and when you add heat to it. So sugar is considered a wet ingredient even though it doesn't really look it. But we're gonna put three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar and then the same equal amounts brown sugar. And the reason I wanted to get brown sugar in here is because brown sugar is regular sugar with a little bit of molasses in it. So it really adds a depth of flavor. You can see how light it is. So basically this little mound gets packed in. It was the same amount of sugar. <laughs> so you go right in and then one more. Pack it in, not super hard, just give it a, a light pack. There you go. So we've got the brown sugar, we've got the butter, and we've got the white granulated sugar. And now the white granulated sugar is in there to help me get a little bit more of a crispy cookie because I'm really looking for crispy. Because the butter's been softened, it's gonna make this come together much more easy. In fact, it's the only way you wanna do it. This is not gonna work with cold butter. I'm covering it so it doesn't go everywhere. So here we go. We're just creaming butter and sugar together. At some point, in almost any baking recipe, there's a point where you just cream butter and sugar. As it starts to mix together, I slowly bring the speed up a little bit. Always turning the bowl, because I like to get every little bit. When it starts to all go up the edges, that's when I get a spatula out and just push all the edges down. This is really coming together nicely. I want it a bit lighter and a bit creamier than it is right now. You can use a little hand mixer like this. You can bring out your big mixer that goes on the table, but this is gonna be one of those cookies that just get it done quickly in the oven. It's 10 o'clock at night, and you forgot that you had to make a bunch of cookies for the bake sale. Make these cookies. 
Super easy. Isn't that just the way it always goes, though? Wolfie always used to tell me the night before whether, you know, he was supposed to bring a class treat or not. I'm like, you're telling me just now? So these are guaranteed to make everybody happy, especially you, because you're going to be baking them. You can kind of see how it went from really crumbly and sandy to now it's really starting to get creamy. Looks like all the butter and the sugar have really started to come together. So now it's time to add the eggs, one at a time. Beat it up. Once that's all incorporated, it's time for the second egg. I'm a stickler for scraping down the sides. Always have been. Both eggs have now been incorporated. So now it's time for some more flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla, about a teaspoon. Vanilla is one of those things that you don't have to be quite precise. It's got so much flavor. So it's about a teaspoon, a little bit more. There you go, that was probably a little bit more. What I wanna get in now is some water. And the reason I'm adding water is because I want these cookies to be thin and crispy. And the water is gonna help them spread out when they hit the heat. So just two teaspoons. This is really my secret ingredient for thin and crispy cookies. Water, who knew? But it's really gonna help them spread as they heat up and bake in the oven. And once all these wet ingredients are together, I'm gonna start blending in the flour. All right, one last scrape down before I add the flour. So just throw all this flour into your wet ingredients. Boom. On low, so all the flour doesn't fly everywhere until it starts to get incorporated. And then scrape it down as it's mixing together. Just adding a little bit more speed to get it all together. I don't wanna over mix these. So even if there's a little flour left on the bottom, that's all gonna get incorporated when I start throwing in all the flavor. So let's get these guys off for now. So basically right now, what you got right here is one amazing sugar cookie recipe. You could just use these right now and make yourself some sugar cookies if you don't wanna add any chocolate or toffees or walnuts. But why would you do that? <laughs> now for all the chunkiness in these cookies. Chocolate chips, it's a half, second half. So um, basically a whole bag, who's counting, right? <laughs> and we got some toffee bits. I love toffee bits in this because what happens is toffee is basically butter and sugar that's been cooked down to it's got this beautiful crackle to it. So when these go into the cookie, you're just adding more butter and more sugar. What could be wrong with that? So let's get a half a cup in there. And then some pre-chopped walnuts. You can get them whole and you can chop them yourselves, but these are pre-chopped, one cup. Please feel free to leave out the nuts if anybody in your family has a nut allergy. I know that we do have friends that when I do make them cookies, I leave out the nuts, but this is the way my favorite cookie store in the world used to make their chocolate chip cookies. Do you guys ever remember Famous Amos? It was this amazing cookie store it, all by itself on Sunset Boulevard. Anybody <laughs> alive during the 80s when I was? And I used to go by there and just buy their cookies. They would sell them in little brown bags. They were so good. The aroma would just like knock you off your feet. It was amazing. There's a lot of chunky stuff going on in here. And I don't wanna overwork the batter. I just wanna get all of the chunkiness folded in to the cookie. And it looks like it is. So it's time to get my cookie scoop out. This makes your life so much easier when you are making cookies. And they come in all different types of sizes. This happens to be a really good one. It's one inch. And it's just gonna make the perfect cookie. It's gonna spread. Just make sure when you do put these cookies on the sheet, put them far enough away from each other because they will spread. So you're gonna grab an overflowing, just like that. And it goes right on the cookie sheet, on the parchment paper. 
If it seems like chocolate chip cookies have been around for a very long time, it's because they have. I believe they were invented by a woman named Ruth Wakefield. Actually, I think it was more like a happy accident. There's a couple stories that go along with this, that she was coming up with a cookie for the ice cream that she used to serve in her restaurant, which used to be called, get this, Toll House. See where I'm going here? And um, she ran out of chocolate. She found the Nestle chocolate bits, put them into the cookie, and voila, there you have it. Now, if you're anything like my son, you watch a lot of Friends. I think he's seen Friends on a loop, like since he was little. And I don't know if you guys remember the particular episode, onto the next sheet, where Monica wanted to know what Phoebe had in her chocolate chip cookie because they were so amazing, so out of this world. And she was like, I don't know, it was my French grandmother and she made them and the, what did she call them? They were um, uh, Nestle Dolaos. <laughs> and for the whole episode, <laughs> Monica's trying to like, there's just like one cookie left and they're, she's trying to bite each cookie and see if she can taste which flavor's in there. Phoebe can't find the recipe that her grandmother, you know, gave her from a long time ago until she looks at the back of a chocolate chip bag full of chocolate chips. And you know how there's that recipe on the back? Yes, Nesle Dolaus. So notice I'm putting them nice and spread apart. And notice that there is a lot of batter here because I'm telling you guys, once you make them, you're gonna wanna make a lot because then you can freeze them. So these will go in the oven at 350 degrees, top shelf, bottom shelf for about 10 to 13 minutes. So while I and you wait for the cookies to bake, just hit pause and we'll come back and do a second batch. Time for the cookies to come out. Oh, see how beautifully they spread? They smell so good. It smells like the famous Amos shop on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> so instead of letting these cool on a very hot sheet pan, I'm going to grab a rack. I want the cookies to stop cooking because they're nice and crispy, actually. As they come off, they still might be a little bit on the soft side, but I want them to crisp up. So they go right onto a cooling rack. And there's so much butter in these guys, they don't stick to the parchment. This would be about the time that Wolfie would come running up. Are they done? Are they done yet? And I'd have to say, they're too hot, sweetheart. They're just too hot. Let them cool for just a little bit because that chocolate in there is piping hot and it could burn his tongue. I was always worried about that. There we go. Let those guys cool. More importantly, I have to let these cookie sheets cool down also before I start putting fresh dough on there because I don't want the dough to cook before it gets in the oven. I'm just gonna reuse the parchment paper. The cookies are cool. They're ready for me to munch on. Are your cookies cool too? You can munch on yours while we munch together. How about that? This just brings me back. I mean, aren't chocolate chip cookies like the first thing you really learn how to bake with your mom when you're little? You no, know it was for me. This recipe is just, if I don't say so myself, perfection. You can do this with your kids, you can do it alone. You can freeze these and have them whenever you want. And I'll be here. So just check back on the app, look up any recipe you want. Hopefully I'm the one cooking it.